Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own spell. Uh, I apologise that it's been a little while since my last video. Uh, I've been having a few uh, issues here and there, which I hope I've sorted now. Um, so to get started, you're going to want to, uh, as usual, open your Skyrim and update ESM files. And if you're editing a current mod, set it as active or you're going to have trouble. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, you're going to want to go under Magic here and Magic Effect. Now it's split into sort of um, three stages, if you will. Uh, magic Effect, which is the actual effect that's going to take place, is sort of like if it was damage health. That that's going to be the the thing that we do in here. So it's it's all the actual sort of calculations to how things work. Um, the next step is actually placing the effects into a spell and clinging them together to actually make it it work and the last step is uh, just place it on a book so you can actually read that book to learn the spell so um, as I get started we need to go with the magic effect so you work from the bottom and make your way up if you will uh, as you can see you've got loads of options here now you could go ahead and just uh, create your spell now and just select a lot of the effects which are already available but sometimes you just want to make a, a slight variation on some of these actual magic effects or you you know you could just want to make an entire new one yourself so uh, if you wanted to edit a current one find something close to what you want right click duplicate and just edit the bits and just make sure that you create a new form for it so we're going to go ahead and uh, right click new so we've got a nice clean form to look at and it, you should end up with something like this a nice big confusing window uh, don't be too worried about it uh, so ID you'd obviously type in whatever you want it to be so I'm just going to put new spell uh, I'm not going to actually create the spell and go in game and show you working I'm just going to show you all the options uh, what they mean how to work a lot of them uh, effect archetype this is really going to be the, the start point so what kind of spell you're going to make so you've got like absorb or banish or to bound a weapon and uh, a lot of your other options will change depending on what you pick here so we'll go with something nice and simple at the moment so we'll go with absorb uh, casting type, there's three here as you can see. Um, concentration is something along the lines of like a healing spell that you'd have to keep keep going. So it, it takes an immense load of concentration so you just can't fire it off and let it do the job. Um, constant effect is usually used for, for stuff like skills and um, everlasting things like damaging something and they've got to be forced to, to fix it like the Magicka. Uh, fire and forget uh, this is uh, the spell that's used most commonly I'll probably say and you just fire the spell and let it do its business uh, so we're gonna go fire and forget it's nice and easy uh, delivery you've got five options here self is obviously it's delivered on the player themselves uh, or whoever's wearing an item or casting the spell uh, so contact is when it hits something uh, an actor or an area uh, aimed is obviously yeah, you're able to specifically aim where you want to fire that spell off and then the sort of something similar to aims which is targeting a specific actor or targeting a specific location so uh, you can really play around with that and um, there's quite a lot of uh, options so magic skill this is really important if you don't set the magic skill it's not going to appear in your inventory after you've learned it from the book it's not going to appear because it doesn't know what to class it as so you've got to pick which it is so I'll just go with destruction uh, minimum skill level doesn't apply to the player it applies to NPCs uh, but you can set it anyway so it's like if it's a low level spell we'll go with 25 usually put 50 75 or 100 um, associated item so this would be in this case what we're actually absorbing so is it health is it stamina magica or is it an attribute uh, what is it so what are we actually going to be absorbing so we'll just go with health uh, associate item 2 is um, only a gain for certain selections so if it's doing multiple things at once uh, so it's, it's just what is associated with the spell what exactly is happening uh, resist value is pretty important to be honest because uh, if someone's firing a flame spell at you that flame you know the player needs to know that that is flames coming at them so that if they've got a perk to resist flames then it'll actually be resisted so if, if this was a fire spell we put resist fire so anyone with the ability to resist fire would also be able to resist that spell uh, perk to apply can usually leave but you can really just uh, play around with a lot of this and find out what it does really uh, tap a duration, uh, weight curve, all this 
I'm going to leave a link in the description to sort of describe uh, a lot more detail on each of all of these options. I'm just going to go through them roughly, but the uh, type of duration and weight it's it's all to do with how long the effect lasts uh, how long until the effect dies off and uh, how quickly or you know how rapidly the effects of it drop in magnitude and uh, all, all, all that kind of stuff i mean usually we just duplicate something close to what we want to use anyway and then you'd edit from there and you can usually it's all set for you really so uh, you're better off sort of duplicating but if you are starting from scratch you can head over to the website for the creation kit and uh, you can figure out what each one of those does and what you want to set it to and you can have a play around see what happens uh, flags are really important too uh, hostile basically means well is it a hostile spell is it if it's a heal spell you won't want to tick that uh, so Detrimental means is it uh, positive or negative? Is it going to take something off like health or is it going to be adding health on? So if you tick that it's going to be bad so it's going to be knocking health off. That's really important. Recover is if it's going to be something that will recover over time. So if it's damaged Majika after the spells ended will it actually just recover itself or is it something that will need sorting by other means? Uh, effects persist. Uh, will the effect carry on after it's been sort of fired off and if so then somewhere here will actually determine how long it lasts uh, you've got you've got a lot of options here I'll just quickly go through uh, I mean any, a few important ones no hit effect I think it it's that one or no hit event one of them means that uh, the NPC or whatever's been targeted won't actually feel the effect hit them so it's sort of soft and quiet uh, no death dispel this will mean that uh, the effects, sort of visual effects, will continue even after the person is dead, so it'll still be around the body. Uh, no duration, pretty important. If it's it's a spell that that isn't going to last for a certain period of time, if it's something like constant that needs to fire off and be there forever, or if it's stated somewhere else, the duration, you tick that. No magnitude is if it, it's something specific like invisibility. Uh, there's no level of invisibility. It's just invisibility, so there won't be any magnitude. No area is something if it was just targeted at a specific actor and not in a general area, then you'd tick that so there isn't an area associated to it. Uh, painless. Uh, basically, if, if the person is supposed to experience pain then if painless is ticked they'll actually scream out the dialogue will know to make them scream because it's supposed to hurt uh, there's a few things like gory visuals hiding ui stuff that you don't really use uh, keywords you can add so you can sort of specify more detail what kind of spell it is so that the game's got more idea uh, counter effects we're going to leave, there's a lot of this that I haven't played myself, uh, I'm just going to go through everything that I know really. Uh, target conditions is pretty interesting, uh, this is if you have something that sort of knocks NPCs to the ground for instance as a spell, but you wouldn't want it to do it to dragons because they're flying in the air and it would cause havoc, then you can set in here like so that it doesn't work on dragons. You've really got to go in and um, really have a, have a good look at that and see what things do uh, to really sort of complicated set of conditions. Um, menu display usually go into AMG and anything past that so uh, magic so this is basically what's going to display in the menu so you'd want this relevant so you wouldn't want a, a frost spell to be with like the, the visuals of a sort of fire spell or something so you'd want to set that accordingly to whatever it might be. Um, casting art, this is all visual and sound effects, this is what you're going to see and hear uh, so it's like casting art is what you'll see in the hands so is it going to be like two glowing balls of light for, for frost or something and you just got to play around and see what becomes available really uh, set up the casting light so the actual light being emitted from it and uh, you'll discover what all these mean, uh, you can check out the website, they'll give you in detail what each one means, but usually like I said we just duplicate an existing one and just tweak it to what we want and most of this is set for you, so there's no need to worry about setting most of it up. Uh, dual casting is basically um, what, what it's going to look like when you, you're obviously you, excuse me, using both hands, and uh, then the scale is how much it's going to be multiplied by for using uh, dual casting. A uh, lot of things here, spell effects, script effects, you can mess around with scripts if you really want. Uh, equipability is to do with, um, you can set something that's always happening around the body as you've got the spell equipped. So you can have some like nasty mist go around you. 
Uh, sounds are pretty self-explanatory for the charge when it's ready, so fully powered, the release of it, the sound, the sound when it hits them, uh, the sound when it dissipates, how loud it is. Uh, really interesting options, uh, lots of choice. I'm not going to actually make the spell like I said, so I'll cancel out, but you'd confirm that, so you click OK. And once you've done your magic effects, or magic effects, because you can add multiple effects to a spell, uh, then you'll go into spell here. Right click new, or duplicate and tweak one. And you go new <coughs> spell again. Obviously, you'd make sure that this ID was unique to your effect one. Uh, you can actually set it not as a spell, but as powers or voice powers, or even as a, an ability, an addiction, disease. So you can have a constant effect sort of disease that you'd have to get rid of. Uh, we'll keep it as spell. We'll go fire and forget. So you have to match the casting and delivery up to what your magic effect is, or it won't appear in the list. So it's no good picking concentration if you made a foreign effect um, for it because it won't appear in the list. So we'll go foreign effect, we'll go target actor. Uh, menu display object, what's going to appear in the menu, what it's going to look like again. So you'll have to go in and select sort of uh, the, the correct one for what you want. Uh, equip type, well, pretty self-explanatory as you can see. Is it a potion? Is it uh, for the right hand, the left hand, both hands, either hand? Uh, voice, uh, how's it going to be equipped? Uh, usually good to click either hand. Uh, it's the safest option to go with. Uh, casting perk, a perk that's going to be required to cast it. I think this is again only applies to NPCs. Uh, range is usually for something like for something like conjuration. So if you're conjuring something, this is the range that you can sort of conjure them away from you. So how many meters? Uh, auto calculate. You can keep that ticked if you want the game to figure out what it should cost and the charge time and the duration of it. Uh, usually a lot of people prefer to pick that themselves if they think it's been too generous or too nasty about it if it's costing too much. And uh, basically all these options appear after you've gone right click new and you start adding your effects in. And then you change your magnitude, area or duration or whichever one is applicable to your, your effect really because they're not all going to be available if you've ticked certain flags. And again, uh, I mean, you can put description, but you don't really need to. That's really for the, the editor's use, I suppose. And, and again, once you've clicked that, you'd go ahead and confirm. And so you've now got your magic effects or effects, uh, which are linked up to your spell. And all that's left to do is be able to actually learn uh, your spell. So you'd have to put it on a book. So if you go under items and book, and then find the book that you want, so you can probably go skill and you just find a book that looks like you what you want so go ahead right click preview when you find one duplicate that book uh, don't make one from scratch because you won't be able to set the the correct stuff to it and then again you'll just name it uh, put the name in that's going to appear in the menu you can change the weight of it if you want it to be heavy or not actually weigh anything uh, that's usually good if it was going to be a quest item usually they make them weigh nothing uh, the value just be careful with because that can be multiplied when someone goes to sell it because they want to sell it for more than it's worth to make a profit um, then you'll click spell select your spell in the list uh, you can change all the description if you want but when you're dealing with learning a spell from a book you don't usually read the book so you just tend to like just write what it is in there the name of it uh, and be done with it and just be careful when you're changing this you'll probably get a box saying uh, spell correction just ignore all every time and just check it yourself. Inventory art, usually all this is done for you because you've copied the book. Uh, the other thing I'll note here, uh, it can't be taken, so you can make it so it can't be picked up, but it can only be read. And you can also set in here that it's a vendor item, and be checking that that is set, otherwise you'll, you'll have troubles with people actually selling the book. And then you go ahead and click OK, and you drag and drop it to where you want in the world and you'll have your own created spell so you can play with around with effects uh, spell with multiple effects you can play around with uh, what book you can put it on uh, what you can learn from the book you can even change it from being um, in a book and have it as rather than a spell just do the same again but in enchantment here so I'll just go into there right click new and you can put it as an enchantment and then fix it onto a weapon instead so uh, lots of options you can play around with, uh, loads of possibilities and you can make some really good spells or even bring back spells that um, were maybe in oblivion and not sort of placed into this. So uh, thanks for watching, I hope you found it really helpful, please leave comments if you're having any trouble, I'll see if I can help you, uh, let me know if I've done any good, uh, if it's a useful tutorial and uh, please visit the website and I'll put the link in the description for the creation kit to explain a little more sort of like the, the creation kit wiki site. 
and I will speak to you next time.